Ahead of this video, I'd like to formally apologize for the lack of references to semis. Hey up, it's your boy. Hi, my name's Johnny and today we are checking out the Epiphone Jack Cassidy signature bass. So this is the first ever semi-hollow you've had on this channel. I'm a kind of rock guy playing with a pick quite a lot and so I don't normally think of semi-hollows. Until now, <laughs> because, wow. I can see when you're not subscribed, so take this time to go and hit that subscribe button. Right now, a massive thanks to my friend Zach for letting me borrow this bass, because this is not my guitar. <laughs> They're hard to find online for sale, second hand anyway. And normally, that's a good sign. Because why on earth would you want to sell this? So, Zach, Zach, Zach Cassidy? No. Jack Cassidy is an American bass player. Playing for, ba playing for band, playing for ba famous for playing, famous for playing in bands like Jefferson Airplane and Hot Tuna. And he's a rock bassist, you know? And so it's weird to me that he'd have a semi-hollow. And this bass, it just works, man. It just works. Oh my god. Anyway, let's get into the bulk of this before I give my overall opinions. <laughs> now, these bases are pretty expensive for Epiphone, to be honest. I've seen them retailing for, for around 500 to 700 pounds. At the minute, the cheapest one I could see was about 629 pounds. So, for an Eastern made guitar, it's actually quite expensive. But is it worth that? Starting at the top, we've got this traditional style Epiphone headstock. I would say that the die-cast tuners are probably one of the weakest points about this bass. I find that in this room, the temperature is pretty good. Things tend to stay in tune quite well, even hanging up on my wall back there. And day to day, the Jack Cassidy I did notice was slipping out of tune a bit more than some of my other basses, so not so good. Moving on up, we have a mahogany neck. So nice. It feels super comfy. It's almost like P bass ish with the way that it sits in your hand, but it's not as wide, I don't think. It's really comfy and easy to play, I think. Now, I had to check the specs for this because the fretboard is Indian Laurel and it doesn't feel like Indian Laurel to me. I associate Laurel with like that dryness and the quite faded look that you get on some of the Squires, but actually, this one feels amazing. And with those block inlays, it looks really good too. No sharp fret edges or anything like that. This thing screams quality out the gate and it's made in Korea. Now this one that I've got here is in faded Pelham blue, which is ugh, gorgeous. Originally it does have a scratch plate on there, but Zach has taken this off and I think it looks really good without it. But it also looks really good with it and it also comes in black, uh, like a really nice red color and the classic gold. It's a maple body with a maple top, but it's got that mahogany look on the sides, which just looks so good. The only thing that's not so good is on the black one. It doesn't have that, it's all black, which I think is a real shame. I would buy the black one in an instant if it had that kind of brown mahogany on the edges. I, I just think it looks so good. Back onto the hardware, we've got the classic Epiphone style three point bridge, which you know, these are notorious for being a bit crap. Just a bit of a vintage, weird design. But, it, you know, it suits the vibe of this bass. Not saying that the vibe is being crap. It suits that vintage look. I think a modern bridge would look a bit weird. But, yeah, it's certainly not the best component. Now, the electronics on this are something that I think is quite interesting and something that I've not seen on a bass before, really. We've got this single low impedance humbucker there, which, you know, doesn't really sound like any humbucker that I've heard. It sounds quite single coily, but still retains that warmth and glow that you get from a humbucker. Now, this isn't paired with any kind of preamp or anything like that. It's completely passive. And the knobs are just volume, tone, and then you've got a three-way selector switch. And this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this rotary, sw sw this, 
This rotary sw rotary? Am I Jonathan Wass now? This rotary, oh my god, this rotor this rotary switch controls the level of impedance and basically it's just controlling your output level. I think there's more to it than that. It seems a bit weird, but the controls are 50 for a lower output, 250 for like a regular output, and then 500 for a higher output. On their website, they say that it gives like an insane amount of tonal variety. I don't really think it does. <laughs> um, for me, I mainly just notice gain boost and volume changes. I wouldn't say that it's like the most diverse sounding thing in the world or it doesn't change the tone that much. Now let's have a listen to what this thing sounds like. All of these clips are recorded on the Line 6 HX Stomp going through my Ampeg SVT4 Pro amp sim with the matching 8x10 cap. I was going to put some new strings on here but when I first plugged in and played it it just sounded so good with these old strings on it and there's probably loads of videos out there with it, demoing it with new strings on. So I thought, let's just keep these old ones on because I think it really suits the vibe of this bass. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So let me know what is your favorite sound in the comment section below. Let's have a listen.
Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm. Yeah. I need to get a semi hollow base. Feeling and the vibe that this thing brings, it just oozes character, and I absolutely love playing this bass with finger style. I don't think it really suits slap so much. There's something kind of dirty and nice about slapping a P bass. Although this bass kind of shares P bass qualities in its kind of sound, the, the slapping on this, I, I, don't, I think it sounds a bit weaker. Whenever I'm picking on this bass, I always want to like palm mute and uh, have a kind of change up my style a bit. And that's what I really like about this bass. It just encourages you to play in a different way and it really earns its spot in your arsenal. Like I've got all these basses up here, but this semi-hollow really brings something different to the table and that's what I really enjoy. Also, uh, a bit inspired by Ian Martin Allison, this bass is an insane synth machine. You might have heard in there, I rolled the tone off completely and ran it with the Dark Glass Alpha Omega to give this like fuzzy distortion. And oh my God, it's, it's so much fun to play. And honestly, I, I could do that for hours. It's got this nice warm sound. And I kind of tested that sound with my Gret short scale and the P bass here, the tone rolled off. I just didn't quite get that same effect. Um, the semi-hollow nature just really brings this resonance and warmth and actually note definition. And that brings me on to the, to the tone control of this bass, which I think is a really great feature. It doesn't seem cheap. Um, it's really usable and every sound is great. I personally like using finger style with 50% uh, tone and rolling it all the way off when adding some effects on there. I just think it's got so much character. It's not the most diverse, but you kind of don't want that out of this bass. It has its own vibe and it brings that to the table. Instead of being this incredibly diverse bass with loads of tonal variants in there, that's just not what this bass is about and it's kind of good for that. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comment down below and also what other basses you want me to check out. Maybe there's some other semi-hollows that you'd recommend. I wanna hear your suggestions. Maybe like a Guild Starfire bass or maybe even the Harley Benton semi-hollow. It's opened up a whole world of bass playing for me. I really wanna get one to hang on my wall permanently. Once again, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.